Hello, and welcome to our first video on cell growth and division. Uh, the thing I want you to consider as we start this video is the idea that many cells are continually growing. So hopefully this makes you think about back when we looked at cells under the microscope. If cells are so small that you need a microscope to see them, how am I telling you that they're constantly growing? And what this ends up leading us to is what I call the big why for this chapter. Every single chapter we cover, there's a question of why that kind of drives everything that we study. And it's something that you need to keep thinking back about as we work our way through the chapter and the material gets a little bit more complicated and a little more involved. The question of why is the thing that should always be driving your study. So in this case, what we need to talk about is why do cells need to divide? I mean, that's our entire purpose of talking about this chapter, right? Cells grow, they eventually divide, and we have to take some time to talk about this idea of why. So when we start to explore this, we start to explore why cells need to divide, the long answer is that it's complicated. And what we'll try to do is go through and make it a little bit easier for you to think about what happens to a cell as it gets larger. Uh, there's two things you have to think about. As a cell gets bigger, their insides, which we refer to as their volume, grows faster than their outsides, the, the surface area. I'll put these in terms that make sense from what we studied two chapters ago when we were studying cell structures. The insides are the cytoplasm. Remember, that's the, the liquid part that makes up the inside of the cell. The outside is the cell membrane. So we're seeing that the cytoplasm makes up the volume. The cell membrane makes up the surface area. And if you remember from last chapter, Everything that gets transported out of the cell gets transported through the cell membrane. The cytoplasm is like where all the cell waste products and energy and food and, and things like that are stored. So an easy way to think about this is to think about them in terms of cubes. The nice thing about a cube as opposed to an actual cell is that it has equal sides. So what we can see when we look at these cubes is you can imagine what happens as cells get larger. So when we start off, you'll see that both the surface area and the volume start to grow. In the beginning with our small cube, the surface area is larger than the volume, which is why we see a surface area to volume ratio that's greater than one. Eventually, as our cube that represents our cell grows, we reach an equivalence point where the surface area and volume are the same. So the surface area to volume ratio is a one. Beyond that point, everything beyond that point of equivalence, we see now the volume is higher than the surface area. So our ratio drops now to below one. That means that the inside of the cell, the volume, is growing faster than the outside of the cell, the surface area. What we'll see in the activity is why this is a problem. This is the answer to our question of why do cells need to divide? Eventually, the volume gets far larger than the surface area, and this begins to create problems for cells. The, the easiest way to think about this, since cells aren't really cubes like they were in that diagram, is to practice this with balloons. So if you consider a balloon is a little bit better of a representation of the actual cells that we would see if we were going through and, and practicing this in a lab. So what you'll do is you'll blow up a balloon and we'll find that the volume, the air that goes inside of the balloon, increases faster than the surface area, the actual stretching surface of the balloon getting bigger as you blow it up. So in this instance, the balloon is a great representation for us of the cell. What you can use is a relatively simple formula on the computer to calculate the surface area and volume using the radius of a balloon. So if you measure a balloon across the middle, we'll say we'll measure it at its widest point to figure out the radius. We'll calculate that radius into our formula, which will figure out the surface area and volume ratio for you. So what you'll do in the lab is you will measure the radius of the balloon as it gets bigger. The calculation will tell you what that does to the surface to volume ratio. What you'll see as you go through this activity is why it becomes a problem for cells if that surface area to volume ratio drops too low. So hopefully this will make for an interesting introduction for the chapter for you. I'm excited to talk to you more about cell growth and division.